been gone for about a month, but I'm happy to tell you that I'm getting back in the swing of things. I'm so happy for what we are going to be talking about. Hey guys, it's Lita. I hope you're all amazing. And if you are not, I hope my video puts a smile on your beautiful faces and makes you laugh. I haven't made one for like a month because I was in slum mode. So I didn't want to do anything pretty much. I just didn't want to do any of the usual hobbies or anything that I really liked. Probably for the past at least three weeks. I just wanted to binge watch stuff. That's pretty much where I have been. And now I feel like doing things <laughs> again. And also I didn't really feel like watching much anime, much of anything. And uh, what are we going to be talking about in this video? Got me out of slum mode, pretty much it did. I don't watch a lot of seasonal shows at this moment in time because previously in the past I have overloaded myself which is what a lot of people do I love seasonal shows I want to watch every single seasonal show that there is like even right now I want to try everything because my anime tastes just like you know change like the wind and I at the moment during the spring 2018 season I'm currently watching two shows I'm watching season two of a Manchu which I'm so happy about you have no idea season two of a Manchu I just never thought that that was gonna happen when it was announced last year so I'm loving that but there is another show I have been so excited for this for the past year I can't believe it's here now and it's it, it's airing after 13 years and this is one of the very first series I ever properly watched and really got me into me the mecha genre. And there are a lot of lifelong fans that I know that have been anticipating this for so long. It needed to happen and I can't believe it's happening. The fourth season of Full Metal Panic! Invisible Victory! Oh god. You know what? Um, just before I get into things, I'm currently doing episodic reviews for Mega Tokyo right now, writing about it, but I needed to do a video talking about it because I noticed there's a lot of guys talking about it on their YouTube channels, particularly anime YouTube channels. There's no females talking about it, giving the female side of this, and I feel I needed to do it. That's why I needed to make this video. <laughs> to get finally here the fourth season of full metal panic oh my goodness <sighs> i love this series so so much you have no idea and i've um actually just before i record this video i watched the third episode today so i will be covering in this video the first three episodes so i guess you can consider this like a impression video but not really I am considering it me just getting my full metal feels out basically that's that's the whole point of this video there's so many things to say about it there's so many things I don't even know where to begin but I guess we can begin with like the first episode it pretty much if you've never seen full metal panic before like the previous seasons then this is a series I would say to you go watch the previous season um, because Full Metal Panic, it's got Full Metal Panic Season 1, Full Metal Panic for Mofu, and then we have Full Metal Panic Second Raid. This series is is pretty much carrying off from where Second Raid is, if anybody didn't know that. And this is a series I say go watch the previous seasons. Not so much um, with the second season like for Mofu. For Mofu is more focused on um, a really comedic take, slice of life take it is i love famofu it is like the number one comedy i recommend to anybody anybody i love that so much but um for what's going on in invisible victory carrying off from uh second raid which i've not seen second raid in years i am in the midst of re-watching it currently right now for review purposes um, I need to just kind of refresh myself anyway because when I dove into episode one, I'm like, wait, 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 I gotta backtrack. I gotta backtrack with what happened in second raid. But I've got the gist of now of like what's been going on and stuff. But just to get to like to know the characters in Full Metal Panic, this is why I do say 
go watch the first season and you can skip Fumofu. Fumofu, you can just like watch after all of this, I would say, and then watch Second Raid, which some people will tell you don't watch Second Raid. People say it's the weakest of the seasons of Full Metal Panic franchise, where I agree and disagree in different aspects. Um, I'm not going to get too much into detail about that side of things, but I say do watch at least Second Raid because then you'll get what is going on an invisible victory and I'll just give you guys the brief synopsis of what Full Metal Panic is about if you don't know so the brief synopsis is based on a private anti-terrorist organization called Mithril and we have our oddball soldier Sosuke Sagara who is sent to pretty much protect guard this 16 year old girl named Kanami Chidori she's been targeted by various enemies we're gonna say at, throughout the franchise because she's considered one of the whispered uh, who has all this classified information deep left deep into her subconsciousness which she has no like real recollection of in day-to-day -day life like it's not like she goes spouting out about this classified information it's in the subconscious it's there but she doesn't even know that it's really there and it has this classified information called black technology where it's like military personnel information that only military anywhere in the world would know not any average person would actually know that's why these people are called whispered and she's considered one of those and there's all these enemies that want to try and apprehend her and Sosuke and the team of Mithril are like pretty much guard her, protect the Whispered and they of course stop any like anti-terror attacks or terrorist attacks pretty much. That's the basic synopsis but for you really to understand the story go watch the first season and second raid and then you can dive into Invisible Victory with no problems because for any newcomers that are going to be watching this and have never seen any form of Metal Panic beforehand you're gonna be confused. Getting into Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. Just the first few seconds of the first episode where I was so excited. The animation, can I say? Ah, <sighs> it, 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 it's like a whole new look for Full Metal Panic. I love the animation. Some of the time, like the animation is a bit hit or miss in certain bits with the CGI in certain scenes. Um, particularly about the car chase in episode 2 involving Sosuke and Kaname. Which, by the way, I keep referring to Kaname as Kaname because that's who I've known her as. I know a lot of people have referred to her as like Chittery from like obviously the Japanese. I've never watched it in the Japanese, I'll be honest. But so it was a little weird to kind of get adjusted to the voices, but it was like, uh, you know what, I can go with this because I grew up with really the dub. So the dub is very special to me, which we're going to get into a little bit later in the video. But um, for me to talk about, rant about, oh my god, I just can't take it talking about this right now. <laughs> you can clearly see. Yeah, so animation, the detail on all the mechas, all the arm slaves looks amazing. Amazing balls, that's what I have to say. And the way the episode started out, seeing Tessa and her brother... Leonard at their parents grave it's pretty much declaring war because Leonard from second raid um, tried to apprehend Kaname previously and he claims to be in love with her which I just you know don't fully believe it you know I don't like the guy he's a snake he's a pretty boy to look at but he's a total snake and it's hard to believe their brother and sister but you know it's like oh we're gonna be enemies now and I'm, I can't even pronounce the name of the organization that Leonard is with because I, I will probably say it wrong. But pretty much they are after to the Whispered. And obviously Konami is one of those and Konami is a massive target now. Um, pretty much Invisible Victory is, I think, is going to be the conclusion to Full Metal Panic Folly, which thinking about it now it's got, it makes me a little sad. <laughs> it does a little sad. I love this series so much and I don't ever want it to be over. <laughs> I don't ever want it to be over. But yeah, so I feel like this this is it. This is where it's all gonna happen. All gonna happen, all serious stuff. And let me tell you, just the the the, the first three episodes are like, oh, it's like it's been like whoa in my face the whole time like watching it especially the first episode like we've got a full 24 minute episode 
no opening, no closing. It was like Invisible Victory was like right in there. And this is what the director said at um, announcing the adaption of this, that this was not going to be like the previous like Fumofu and um, Second Raid. It was going to be like full in there. And they really have stuck to their word on that. And I love that we were treated to a full 24 minute like episode for episode one I think that was the best way to just get right back into it and it really did feel like that it's like back like we never left kind of vibe and I just was so in love with it I just all I could think about while watching the first episode was just seeing everybody all the characters I love particularly obviously Konami and Sosuke and you know one thing I will say that has bothered me greatly with Full Metal Panic has been the relationship between Kaname and Sosuke that throughout the other seasons it's been teased you're teased it's like a romance fan I am I ship them so hard they, they suit each other like they really do and it's just been teased all these little moments they've had together and then it just fizzles out and then nothing happens and then like episode one blew my mind just the scene even though like I don't think Konami and Sosuke were fully aware of like what they were even doing why they were doing it but it's just the scene where like he sees this couple passing by holding hands and then he's like D do you want to hold hands and Konami's like what and then they're both like what so awkward and they just hold hands anyway and oh my god did anybody else die who is, is, who is like a hardcore fan of this series? Did anybody else feel just die? Because mine just died in that scene. And it continued like when they get to the apartment, she needed to get her apartment keys out of her, her coat. And then it's like, it's like, do I have to let go of your hand? I'm like, I've been saying no, don't let go of your hand. Oh, I'm getting so red talking about this. Oh my god. <laughs> and then like, you know, she opens the door, they continue holding hands. And then of course you there is that feeling as like the scene's gonna be ruined. And of course there was. There was Leonard, you know, giving his, you know, threat spill and I just love the scene where Kaname is like in his face and you know, I'm just like, that's my girl. <laughs> that's my girl. I just love it when she gets angry. I love it. Let's go back to the hand scene, holding hand scene, because it was this awkwardness. Both characters had no idea what they were doing, and I'm just like, I don't care. That just happened. Can more of this happen, please? This is only 12 episodes of Visible Victory, and I'm like, just give us. If you give us more sweet scenes like that, I think I might die just from watching episode three beforehand before I recorded this video <laughs> oh god I died my feels feels they really really died because so, episode three was focusing on the um Leonard's organization is well pretty much has been bombarding mithril on Meridi Island um trying to trying to get them to surrender which, by the way, all the action for that has been amazing as well. Like, Full Metal Panic action, balance, balancing the comedy and the action, Full Metal Panic just so well. And that's why it doesn't feel so military heavy. Because, uh, you know, a lot of military an anime can feel heavy in terms of, like, um, the plot aspects can be a bit confusing. You know, military talk can be a little bit confusing. And Full Metal Panic is one of those rare series as a military one that balances both seriousness and like the comedic aspect. My favorite scene of these two now, the, at the end, towards the end of episode three, there's this vulnerableness in the air when they start admitting how they really feel like Konami's saying that she knew that this false peace couldn't last forever, that Leonard would come for her. And that they're both scared and that they're scared that of how they care for each other. I'm like, I cannot believe I am hearing this right now from the past seasons. We never heard anything like this. And I'm like, we're hearing this now. 
<laughs> oh my god. So I kept saying in my head, oh my god, and Sosuke comes in with this smooth talk and just it, the way he talks would sweep any girl off her feet. Like, you are the reason my world changed and that, you know, I want to protect you and everybody else and oh. Oh my god. I, 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 I just died. I died in that scene because seeing this vulnerable side of both of them exposing it to one another, I... Oh my god. I, I just loved him. I loved every second of that scene. It's like they, they were confessing their feelings that they, they, they like each other, they care about each other, but then they're scared and she admits that she's scared of him and all the chaos that comes with him and... Oh my god. <laughs> Just thinking about it. I, we're already on episode three and I don't if it's where if they like even <laughs> thinking about it, if they even kiss. Oh uh, <laughs> I don't know if we can take it. I like getting all red thinking about it. See, this is what I'm truly like when I'm watching an episode. Or a series like Full Metal Panic when it's a favourite. Oh man. I tell you, Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory is doing so many things right. It really, really is. Action side of things has been obviously fantastic. It really has. One thing I love is that they're using some of the original soundtrack from the first season of Full Metal Panic. I noticed the particular tracks they've been using in Invisible Victory and as soon as I heard it in episode 2 in particular during like the car chase or while Kaname and Sosuke were being pursued, oh again, my feels died. I'm like, you're using some of the original soundtrack. Oh my god. That really brought back the feels even more. It really I cannot believe how full on everything is right now. Like, you know, Kyoko's been kidnapped and there's a bomb at their school and bloody Mithril's getting bombarded, especially by those behemoth things. I loved in episode three taking the tactical approach. It kind of gave a glimpse, especially to people who have never seen Full Metal Panic, of the tactical side, how Mithril works as an organization, how they work as a group, and I was just happy to see Kurtz. I love it when he's got a gun in his hands. Seriously. I mean, he's best shot. Best shot. And, I, you know, I was a little sad that they lost two of their comrades as well, like Spec and the Mao's lieutenant. I was a little sad because the lieutenant guy had been around for ages in the franchise, <clears throat> and now he's just killed off. Seriously, can we just talk about Tessa as well. Tessa was so badass in episode two. It's like her best moment. Speck was joking around while they're trying to figure out what to do about the enemy coming. You know, that they should sur surrender their submarine Dana and that they should surrender Tessa with it. And Tessa just, it's like a badass moment for her. Because this animation makes her look 20, I forget that she's 16 and she just, you know, what the floor with him, Remind, like, reminded me why she is captain. You know what, I am just so happy to have this show back. I'm, I want, I'm gonna say that also, there's only gonna be a few shows in your life where you're gonna be grateful that you're alive to see it and I'm... Full Metal Panic's one of those, definitely for me, for the first to say ever. Because I've never said it about any other series that I'm so happy to be alive that I get to see this new season. And also that what I wanted more than anything was the English dub cast to return because this is getting a simul dub cast through Funimation officially now. May 6th it starts, people, and my favourite English duo is back. Lucy Christian, Chris Patton, who play Kaname and Sosuke. Oh my god! Just seeing the announcement on Twitter, I that's all I wanted from this series. Again, I just the English dub to it is one of my favourites, and I cannot wait to just rewatch it all in the dub. I cannot wait. The opening theme, the ending theme. 
Oh, as soon as it came in from episode two, I think the end, the opening thing's called What If. Um, I can't remember the name of the girl who sings it. She sings both the opening and the ending, but it is a beautiful, beautiful song. Some of the guitar instrumental in it, I can hear piano. It's, it's just perfect for this series. Oh, it's so perfect. I put that song, the opening theme song has been on repeat for like the past week. If you have not checked out Full Metal Panic yet, go watch season one and second raid. And if you have not checked out this, the Invisible Victory, but you've seen the previous seasons, you need to be watching Invisible Victory now. I will wait each week for this. I'm happy to, seriously. Usually I like to binge stuff, but there's gonna be exceptions. And this series is an exception. I'm gonna stop fangirling now because I feel like this is all this video has been fangirling fest. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments. Anybody else who is a fan of Full Metal Panic? Are you happy it's back? Are you watching the new one like I am? Are there any particular favorite moments you have? Just let me know. Just let me know any thoughts. I would just want to have a discussion with anybody about it. And I'm sorry if this video was very full on fangirl. Um, I knew it was going to be, but I feel like I've let out everything I wanted to <laughs> pretty much and the um as you can see also I never even mentioned it that I'm not even in the study room I recently got a new phone it's up to 32 gig recording on my phone is a new possibility for me now which is amazing so that means I can even do like car vlogs that I wish to do it's opened up a lot of new ideas for me definitely i hope you guys enjoy this video me fangirling and uh, yeah it's just been really good to just talk about formal panic what more could i want in life the owner of the dawn second season would be great studio parents. <laughs> all right i'll see you guys in the next video hopefully next week I follow me on my blog um lidakinaanimecorner.com and i didn't <laughs> I'm so messing up this ending. And on Twitter, where I am most of the time at Kino Reviews, I'll just see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye.